guys. It's been a little while since I've recorded a Camaro video. I got a pretty good deal on these QA1s. I got a gift card and whatnot for Christmas. Finally uh, decided to order them. So I picked these up through Jigs. Um, I thought about going with Tony's, but I wanted to try these out because hmm, they're a little different and they're single adjustable with a dial caliber on it or dial indicator, I should say. Here they are. You can see I've already kind of fooled around with it. All the settings there, cut that open. This is what comes with it. Installation instructions. Now these do have to be, uh, they need a little modification on the spindle, which is some grinding, which I will show the area after I get the front strut off and where it hits. There's a little bit of the uh, instructions there. As well as backside, quick overview. And then these are the settings for the adjusters. I'm probably gonna run it on between six and 10 is my guess. Uh, we'll always have to check and see. I'm not drag racing or anything like that. So for decent street driving and occasional, uh, what would you call it, handling, I guess, I'll probably run it on, I think I have it on six or eight minutes. Looks like I think I twisted it to six earlier. Um, but once we get it on the car and we drive around a little bit here in the next week or two, I'll update and uh, see if I need to bump it up or lower it. But this is the unboxing. There is a specific left and right. That is one thing you do have to remember because of what you have to grind on the spindle for it. Um, I will show what it is for both sides after I get the struts off and everything. I'll catch back up. All right, back again with a quick update. I got the jack under here, just a pump or two. I might do one more. And these are what you're gonna need. It'd be nice if I had a big enough uh, ratcheting wrench or wrench in general, I can't find it, but I believe this is 15 sixteenths or 13 sixteenths, excuse me. Should be the same size. <clears throat> Let me look. So, these two are both 27s. It fits on there, but the rotor's in the way. By 27, I mean 15 sixteenths. And that's exactly what the ones in the back are here. And then up top on the spindle, not the spindle, sorry, the strut. The strut is a 13 sixteenths, which fits right on there perfectly. I'm not too worried about these struts. They're going in the trash. So I'm just gonna put a vice grip on the bottom and um, Hold it tight while I give it some few ogadogas to pop it off. I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys where the shocks hit on the spindles when you put the QA1s on. See you soon. Also, one last thing I forgot here, the bolt that holds the, the little uh, brake line bracket on there is a 716, so you can just wrench that off. And then uh, you should be good to go. All right, so you can see the driver's side struts out and you can tell these are pretty bad. I can just push them down pretty easy, straight up and down, no problem, and they're stuck. So, came off pretty good. Did the crescent wrench on one side, and then I did the impact on the other, zip top zop, came right off. Same with the top, a few little spins, and it was done. Um, I'm gonna start retrofitting, I shouldn't say retrofitting, I'm gonna start test fitting the strut see where it hits up and then I'll take another little video. All right, so this is the driver's side or left side. You can see the adjusters right there. It's also demonstrated here on top where it comes through the mounting point for the top of the strut. They're marked left and right. So this is passenger side, right side. I'm doing the driver's side currently. I'm wearing a headlamp, so I apologize for awkward lighting. You can see right here, oh. it hits just right at the bottom there. Just right there. You can see the hole isn't lined up there, but it's good on top. And then when you spin it around, turn it as far as you got lock, come to this side, 
you can see there as well it's just on the front there it's got to come down eighth of an inch maybe and then potentially right there I don't think that area will be as affected because once you grind let me zoom back out here sorry guys once uh once you grind down that front spot where it's tapping right there, you can see in the video, it's already got a little gold paint on it, so I was checking it. Once you do that, I think the bolt hole will line up and then it'll go right in. So this is the same for both sides, for driver side and passenger side, you have to make these little grind marks. I will make the grind marks and test fit it multiple times and I'll show you where it's at. Thank you, talk to you soon. So I did the grinding. This was definitely a trial. I probably should have started right about here and then went down. Um, but for precaution, I wanted to make sure I got the whole area pretty level. So I started up top and just worked my way down. There's a little lip here, but it's fairly smooth for the most part. I got it started up in here with the right side. And then you just slide that guy. Let's see here. Very movie for a second. Huh? Right there. And just like that, you can see the hole is clear and it's cleared in there. Right there is it's perfect, got enough room on the top and bottom there. See through it. I just spray painted a little bit to cover the exposed steel. And then I'm gonna hook it up the rest of the way to the top and bottom, torque it up, and then do the other side. I'll show you finished afterwards. All right, so I got them all clearance. There's enough gap in between the bottom of that strut. Kind of hard to tell with the lighting. Uh, like I said, I give it a little spray paint coating to prevent rust. Got the bolts in. Now the only thing that is a royal pain in the is the strut right here, the strut rod itself. When you get them out of the box, they are like this. So to properly put them in, best way to do it is just slide it up through the top like they say in the instructions and then pull down on the strut till it's about level with where the uh, mounting part is on the spindle that way you can just fold it up and push those bolts in get everything set up to be tightened up the other thing I noticed is the holes right there on the mounting point itself they are not threaded like the like the other strut that came off or bolt, what do you call it? The brake line bolt. So I gotta figure out something to connect the bolt right there. I'll take a picture when I do. All right, I got the strut up top, torqued down and good to go. I got, I found a couple miscellaneous bolts, washers and, um, what do you call them? Not snap locks, but uh, nylon locking nuts, just in case, put those on. Got those down and torqued. And everything's basically back to the way it was. The only thing I can say about the quality of these two is the color of the stress themselves. This is more of a, of a matte color. And my other one is more of a gloss sparkly color. I don't think it'll change how they work, but overall, pretty happy with the quality of these shocks. I'll go over the instructions one more time once they're both in. All right, I got the other side in and mostly torqued. I still have to put in my little makeshift bolt washer and nylock um, nut right there for the brake line. That's up there. I just gotta get the torque wrench and make sure everything's nice and snug. Now, with the adjustment on these, the softest setting, sorry for the shoddy camera work, the softest setting is counterclockwise, which is zero. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I have on both sides. And that's right in between a good handling and driving and getting closer towards racing and performance. Um, let me 
get the paper over here really quick. One sec. It's right there. I'm running the struts with one adjuster knob. Zero to six clicks is drag racing. Two to eight clicks is for nice ride handling. And then eight to 12 is for firm ride and improved handling. 13 plus is for more aggressive handling. I figure eight is a solid middle area to start and see if I need to back it off just for running around in the street and whatnot. Um, but overall, I think these fairly easy to go in. Definitely take your time grinding because it comes out nice when you do it. Um, I recommend smaller than a four and a half inch angle grinder because that's what I was using with my Milwaukee. Right there. And then I set these bad boys to eight. And uh, yeah, I'll post a driving video or review once I get this on the road here about the next week. Thanks guys, see you later.